we're live I think great um hope you're keeping well uh this is oh this is looking slightly different today I'm not quite sure why oh it's mirror image oh this is confusing for me mm, wondering if I can change it around no it's gonna <laughs> I've realized if for me it's an it's not a mirror image which is actually more difficult to then do into the screen but I'll do my best I may have to look down at my hands rather than into the screen um hello Penny lovely to have you here I think it's what it is a little bit here oh it's very confusing hello money welcome Galen oh thank you for joining I'm just yeah I'm a little baffled because my usual my usual screen is usually a mirror and I can work into a mirror, but this is actually the way around that you see it, which is very confusing for me. Stephen, hello. So it may be a bit more challenging, but we'll get there. Um, I hope you've had a good, gosh, a whole month. I'm sorry it's been a month. I've, I was looking at my diary and trying to get a little bit more organised and actually there'll be another fold next week. So just a week to wait this time. Alberto, lovely to have you. Thank you for joining. So, yeah, I'll be back actually next Wednesday and then I think a couple of weeks after that. But I, I will put the dates in, but I will definitely be here next Wednesday. So we can have a, something a little bit more regular. Hmm. So I hope that will be good. We'll do a different fold as well. Adrian, lovely to have you here. Oh, wow, the whole gang is gathering. I think last time I, I ended up having to do a session in the morning, which wasn't very good for, for almost anybody. So it's really good to be in the afternoon. And it's great that this obviously works for most of you. So, yeah, if you want to, you can put a note next Wednesday at 2. We'll also be folding. Um, as usual, I'll just chat for a few minutes and then we can start at five minutes past. Oh, I wish my screen was the right way around for me. <laughs> uh, it's amazing how you can, yeah, how it's actually very difficult to fold into a screen if you're seeing what everybody else is seeing. You can work into a mirror, but the other way around is a lot harder. So anyway, oh, yes, I'll bet it. The trip to Japan was incredible. And I'm still I'm still pondering and learning from that so much. Um, yeah, I think most of all, that's that Japanese spirit, the omotenashi, the, the art of welcoming people. And I think origami is part of that. Um, I was given a lovely, lovely book by um, a researcher there on the kind of origins of origami which is which is fascinating it really does come from the gift giving culture um, of wrapping wrapping presents gift giving is a very important part of Japanese culture and wrapping shows that you've put in that time and care as well so that's it that's its origins which seems more formal but I think it's it's from that giving of gifts and the origami itself, of course, is a gift. So I've been, yeah, really enjoying pondering that. At the moment, actually, I am folding lots and lots of cranes, a classic thing to do um, for our hospital board. Um, yeah, which is which is to, um, we've got a little quiet room, which is just bare of anything without a window. So going to bring in hopefully a cascade of cranes hanging, which I hope can add some beauty so again I find the biggest motivator is folding to help others really and that's 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 why I learned to it's I do my own art which can be very different to this but I think it's a it's an art form that's about expressing care for others and that to me that's what's beautiful about origami and I think comes from that Japanese culture yeah so oh four minutes past Greg. Oh, Melvin, thank you for joining. Wow, it's lovely to have a big group. I was just saying I'll actually be back next Wednesday, I think after that in two weeks' time, and then there'll be Easter holidays, there'll be a bigger gap. So I was just keen to squeeze in another one, so that will be next Wednesday as well, if you happen to be free. Um, I thought I'd bring along an animal fold. I've actually already put up a video already. Of course, dragon would have been the most obvious and probably the right thing to do given it's you know it's been the new new year Chinese new year and it's year of the dragon um I've seen some nice modifications I'm sure you have done as well of cranes you can modify it to look a bit like a dragon which is good but I I just felt like something completely different again 
Um, I don't do many animal folds, to be honest, but I thought, you know, the classic thing is to fold an elephant. Um, and it's it's uh, something which is so kind of recognisable. Um, very much keen to support people who are just starting origami. So it's got to be exciting enough to bother, but at the same time, not so difficult that it's, you know, not possible as well. Of course, you can do very detailed. So it's that kind of suggestions oh that's lovely to hear Melvin you've been folding cranes for others really nice so I thought we'd do an elephant I'm not quite sure I mean there are many elephants um this for me is is from this book I don't know whether you know what I picked it up second hand years ago um paper folding fun origami in color and it is by this lady um so Sulal Ayatora Sashini. I don't know if any of you know her. Um, the book, I think, is almost 50 years old, which is crazy, isn't it? From, from the 80s. Um, and in it is an elephant. Um, so I don't know whether it's her design or traditional. It's a mixture, actually, this book of traditional and, and other designs. So it doesn't quite say. But I thought an elephant's a nice one to do. I've slightly modified it, actually. So anyway, so I can do it. <laughs> So something a bit like this. So you might want to get some, if you have some grey paper, if not, I will start colouring some. And as I keep saying, it's very strange. My screen has turned around. So it's the view that you have. But for me, that's really bad because I can't then fold into the screen without my head being completely confused. So I'm going to have to look down all the time, unfortunately. I can normally fold when I'm going into the screen. So I'm going to make, first of all, a square. You take one corner and bring it down that bottom edge. This will be quite a big elephant, actually. There we go. And then I'm going to remove. Oh, I've been following trumpeting elephant. That's good to hear, Stephen. Hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Stephen. I will check that out. Going to remove that rectangle. So I'm going to really quickly colour my square. If you've got any grey, Think some grey origami paper, one that you think would be suitable for an elephant. Or you could colour it, or you could just keep it white. So honestly, there's no right or wrong. I really do truly wish I'll maybe have a little read, but there's a way for YouTube Live to go to show your mirror image because I really cannot fold otherwise into a screen, which is a real shame because I've I am able to fold into a screen normally, but without it being mirror image, it's too confusing on the head. <sighs> Here we go. So I have coloured one side grey, and I'm going to come down that. I'm going to have to point it down so I can see my hands, because otherwise I'm not going to be able to do it. Right. So I'm going to take this outside edge and bring it to that middle diagonal line. So if you've got origami paper, this would be your white side and first of all, fold it into a triangle like so. And then open it up. Oh, thank you, Alberta. That's very kind of you. Um, this outside edge to that middle diagonal. And I don't in any way claim to be, you know, an original regardless whatsoever all I'm doing is encourage you to join what's what's a very rich culture and I think one that's of sharing and, and my my attitude is more about encouraging you to be kind to yourself and learning something new and actually the sense of achievement it may not be the first time it's been done but for you it's the first time and that's why it's creative that bottom edge giving yourself that confidence you can do more than maybe you thought you could and the same the same goes for me too Again, that bottom edge to, to meet as well there. There we go. So hopefully it's looking like that. Is that good for you? I'm going to have to look down at what I'm doing. It's confusing. <laughs> oh, thank you, Melvin. Well, I think only in learning ourselves are we being our own champion in our care and well-being, which is to be kind to yourself to learn something new. And I think really I wouldn't have embarked on origami if it wasn't for a patient asking me to learn. And since it was from a patient, 
asking me to pass it on of course I was going to for somebody else and I think I think that's actually a lot of what origami is about it's about that care for others and wanting to pass things on and that's always a good motivator to to learn as well so take this top corner and bring it to <laughs> I really can't do it on the screen so to take the top and then bring it to this point here there we go like so there we go and I know some people get an overhead camera which in many ways it's a very good way of doing it but hey I don't give myself the easy easy way to do things right so we're going to make a little tail for this elephant so this will become a tail this area so lifting this up I just want you to bring it out so it sticks out this will be the tail so a fold something like this here we go so it was all laying there and I just did a little fold there keeping that almost tucked there like so that's it great so I presume you're happy do say if not oh I think rubber hub oh Hopping and discovered origami in a hospital. That makes so much sense. I think origami is such a good, good place in hospital. Mm. Harbin. Ah, yes. Does anybody know the origins of elephants? I presume they're not old traditional pieces of origami, but they've quickly become almost traditional. I don't know if any of you know more about elephant origami. Uh, turning it over like so. That's it. And next, we're going to work on the head. So taking this, this will become a trunk. And bringing it up. I'm sorry, I'm not showing you this into the screen, which is what I would prefer. But um, just what I'm having to do at the moment. There we go. Something like that, I think. There we go. Great. I hope that works. It's definitely putting me off not being able to look into the screen. I'm going to leave again almost another tuck there. So taking this and this will make the sort of sticking out head, which will obviously eventually become my trunk as well. There we go. So leaving this tuck behind like so. It's kind of almost like you can just about imagine it's an elephant that's going to emerge their tail, the body and the head. That's it. Okay, are you happy? Have you all got that? Please say if you're not. So our next step will be, as most animals would be, to now fold it in half. Like so. Great. Now, this will be the bottom of the body. You can see there's a little tail there. And so I think to get the head a little bit more in the right position, so I'm just going to sort of tilt it like so. And then this area could become the ear. Mm, it depends actually how far you want to go down. Mm. Maybe something like that. There we go. So you can see it could could stand up, but it's more like um I don't know, a bird or something at the moment. There we go. Yeah, I'd love to hear if any of you know more about elephant folds. Um <laughs> So we're almost there really it's a very simplified elephant but in some ways that could be a nice thing simple can be good so i hope you're all keeping up as i said i find it a bit harder to gauge what i'm doing because i normally love doing it directly into a screen but i can't do it the other way around <laughs> for you i'm sure it's just completely normal but for me it's just flipped entirely Harbin, oh, that's, that's, Harbin, Harbin, yes, thank you, Stephen. 
Um, so I'm going to make a trunk. So maybe, first of all, just thinking what position you might want your, your trunk to go in. So I'm just going to take the bottom, kind of lift it up. I'm just imagining that elephant lifting its trunk up. It'll be something of a guide. That's it. Oh, like those icons up this way. Maybe you could also think about the bottom at the top of the trunk as well. Coming down like that. So almost a bit like the birds. It doesn't look that great if it's left like that. So it's sort of opening it up. Um, oh, no, I've, I've realised I've done it a bit differently. You know what? Just make it up as you go. <laughs> it is what makes your animal unique. So this will become a trunk. And I'm just thinking about, actually, I think I am going to simply push it in. As I said, I'm really not very practised in animal worlds. So please do feel that you can do it whatever way you want. Um, not giving excuses, but I do think you can put out by a screen. Not quite. All right. Hmm. My trunk is going down now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, I'm completely forgetting how I did this. It's amazing how the screen has just totally slightly scrambled. <laughs> so I'm going to push this up, bring this up as you as you wish. This is probably not how to do it. But we can be a little bit more rough about this, I reckon. I recommend just playing around until it's kind of going the positions you would like. So I've lifted up the trunk. And I've got a little fold there. You could do it other ways. The end clearly is pointed and that's not very good. So I'm going to just take that little tip and tuck it underneath. So it's less obviously pointed. I think that will do. Uh, I might give some ears, but I recommend you play around. And I, I think that's what's really nice about the animal side is to is to do your own unique thing. So it becomes your animal, your little character. There we go. I think that's kind of elephantish. It's simple. <laughs> But in a way, that's what origami does. It's almost like a hint of what it is. It's, you know, there are, it is possible to do very realistic folds, but actually doing something that's just a suggestion is a beautiful thing. How has, how has that worked for you? Have you been able to make an elephant? I'm sorry, I feel like the trunk, I was really poor at explaining that, but I think I was just sort of pressing in and lifting it up. And I'm sure there's better ways of, of doing it looks like a pony maybe i don't think ponies have such a long trunk though but um maybe it's all different <laughs> there we go so we'll be back next week next um wednesday more we'll fold something then something different <laughs> how, how have you all got on yeah well done atrian um I hope it's worked. Has it worked for you? Oh, nice. Oh, well done. I think that's probably more down to your experience than my teaching, I have to say. Honestly, it's really thrown, thrown me doing it back to front. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I, yeah. I think once followed a, a challenge of doing an elephant threefold. It's, yes, as you say, it's hinting at the shape. Um, yeah. Excellent. I'm glad you enjoyed it and uh, looking forward to next week. I'll try and be a little bit more polished. I, I truly wish I could find a way to get the screen back the right way around for me. I'll see if that's possible. Thank you. Well, look after yourselves, everyone. Wishing you a really good week. Oh, thank you. And take care and keep up the folding. Maybe you can make a, I don't know what, a, a herd of elephants, I guess. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye.